because they need the resources to overwinter. So by winter, I was ready, by end of winter, I was ready to do my beans. There's a, here, here's a chair also, please. You can hand this around to somebody here. Um, so, obviously if, you, if you're here, you either think this is interesting, you think you might want to do this yourselves. Um, why would you want to keep beans? Um, for one, it's a really easy hobby. The bees don't need your help to do what they do. They do it all by themselves. Bees. <laughs> so I check my hive. I happen to travel a lot for work. I'm not in there every day. I go and check the hive about every week and a half to two weeks. I'm looking at it for an hour, maybe an hour and a half. As it gets farther into the summer here, it's been more, it's taken me about almost two hours. And that's it. You provide, make sure they've got a water source. It's easy. And you get honey. Another big bonus. You increase the, the pollination in the area. Bees will <coughs> travel up to about three miles to find the pollination that they need. So you don't have to have everything they need right in your yard. They're going to go off, they're going to your neighbors, down the block, back and forth. I don't know where all the places they go, but if you're here and you're in the stake boundaries, my bees have probably been around your yard. So have other people's bees. And they've probably got neighbors and such who all have bees that you don't even, maybe even realize. Unless they've got a large bee yard with lots and lots of hives, you probably don't even notice. I know there's ones two or three doors away over this way. I know a couple other people are in my own ward who have them. But for the most part, people come to our backyard and they'll be out, meeting us, we'll be on the deck. They don't even realize we've got bees, beehives in the backyard. They are not swarming your backyard all over the place. So um, easier to take care of than wasps? Is that what you're saying? A lot easier to take care of than wasps. Um, you're not getting much honey with those. Right? <laughs> yeah, those, it's hard to milk those to get the, get the honey out of those. The neighbors know I have them though. Um, surprisingly, before we got the, um, the bees, we had our hives back here waiting for the day when, we, when, the, when the bees arrived. And we'd go into the, into the hives and just kind of showing someone what they were. And there would be little um, wasp nests started. So we'd break those off. Two or three days later, I opened up. Another one started and such. Since we've got the bees, I'll see some wasps around the yard because they'll find the water source we have for the bees and those things. But they leave the yard because there are 10, 12 wasps and 80,000 bees. They know the numbers. They figure out... This isn't a place to stay around. We put a couple, we put two wasp nest, nest catcher things, you know, those little yellow tubes around the yard. They've got maybe one or two wasps because they all leave the area. So you also can help clear your area of wasps. Um, educational for the whole family. This is really, it, these are amazing insects. They do some things that you sit there and go, how could that little bee and that whole hive know this much? Uh, they, we'll, we'll talk about how they decide when they need a new queen and how they make a queen and then they also, they work, the hive is not really a bunch of bees, the hive as a whole is like one large organism. If a bee is out <coughs> and happens to get sprayed with a, with a chemical pesticide or something that gets injured, or they just get feel that like they're getting sick, they will not come back to the hive and hurt the rest of the hive. They'll just stay out and die. I wish my kids were that. Yeah, they, they, you know, <laughs> everybody worked that way. Your kids? <laughs> so, they're, they're really interested in what they do. And, once again, honey. You can get a lot of honey. A, a normal hive, a full hive um, that's going, you can get 60 to 80 pounds of honey a year out of a full hive. Probably not your first year. Um, now that's with the, what we call Langstroth, we'll talk about. A top bar hive, which is what I use, you're probably 40 to 50 pounds. A little bit less honey because the bees do more work with wax and such. Uh, but this year, myself, even though we have two hives, we're probably not going to get take any honey. We'll wait to see what's left after spring um, instead of taking it in the fall. Uh, so we just see how they <laughs> make it through our first year and how they do winterizing and such. Because um, the honey is what they live on. So you have to leave enough honey 
for them to make it through winter, or you're going to have to feed all the time and such. And so you want to leave enough and then just take the excess. So there are over 20,000 types. I keep, sorry. <coughs> iPads flip around when I turn them. Uh, um, over 20,000 types of bees in the world. And honeybees are only one of those. So you'll hear different types of bumblebees and different things, sweat bees and such. Honeybees themselves are only one small group of those. Um, they are not native to the U.S. They were brought here way, way back from Europe. Um, there are breeds. <laughs> well, they brought them too. Okay. Um, so there's Italian bees. These are the most prevalent. If you're going to purchase bees and, and want a package of bees, or if you get a swarm, you're probably going to get Italians. Um, you can also, the other second most popular are Carniolans, and I happen to have Carniolans. They're just different types of bees will do different things. So Italian bees produce a lot more, they, they produce more honey, but they're also more aggressive. There are other types that may produce more propolis, and propolis is a almost, I'll say, tar-like substance they take from trees, bees extract from trees, it's like sap, tar-like substance, and they convert it, and they use it to seal the hive, to keep it airtight and such so it doesn't get co too cold. Uh, it, it has it's antifungal, antimicrobial, antibacterial, it's this great stuff. What was that called again? Propolis. Um, and they make this, and so when you go into the hive, we'll say today we get in there, you, you kind of scrape it off occasionally and such. Carniolans don't produce as much, and they're a calmer bee. So we decided, our first ones, let's go for a little calmer Carniolans than the Italians. Um, there are what's known as Minnesota Hygienics. These are ones that have been bred to try to clean up the hive better. Bees are very sanitary. A bee dies in the hive. There are bees whose job it is as mortuary bees to pick up the dead bee and fly it out of the hive. And they'll fly it 20, 30 feet off and drop it off out there. Um, when bees winter, so in the winter they pack themselves all around the queen to keep the queen warm and they eat the honey and they move through the hive eating this. Well, once it gets below 40 degrees, they don't come out of the hive because it's too cold for them. So all during winter, when it gets mid-January, early February, all of a sudden it's above 40 degrees, the bees will all take off out of the hive that day for cleansing flights because they haven't pooped for three months, because they won't do that in the hive. Another thing my kids, kids. do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking dogs. Yeah. Dogs, dogs, kids, they don't do that. The bees, they won't do, so they'll take off and clean, and then they come back and it starts to get too cold again. So they're, they're very hygienic. Um, there are other kinds, Caucasians, Russian bees, which are, they're hard to find here in the U.S., uh, but they, they overwinter very well because they're used to being hives in Siberia and such. So um, if you were going to be keeping bees at, up in North Wisconsin, Minnesota, those areas, you might find some people keeping Russians. Um, and then there's some other ones, these buckfast bees and starline. These are hybrids of different people. There was a, a monk, buckfast, this, this monk that tried to mixed genes of different types to come to it in Buckfest. These are harder to find. You can, you can find them online to try and get someone to send you queens that are of this type. But uh, Italians and Carniolans are the main ones. Caucasians are racist. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there are three, three bee types of bees in, in any hive. Queens, workers, and drones. There's only one queen. There's more than one queen, one of them's going to die. Because... They're going to fight it out to see who's going to be queen. So, queen's the largest one in the hive, and there's only one. Um, a queen takes 16 days to develop. So, let's talk about that. There's a queen, and everyone talks about why, you know, so when they, they call certain women, she's the queen bee. You may not want to be the queen bee. Yeah. Queen bee, so a queen will go along and will place eggs in the cells. Um, as it says here somewhere, lays between 1,500 to 2,000 or so eggs a day. Wow. She is laying eggs constantly. And she'll go along and all these, putting all these eggs in. Do, 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 do. The workers then feed